Hello again, this is my follow-up to the unboxing of the Club 3D Radeon R9 290X. Today I'm going to be talking about performance. Uh, first off, I would like to say that getting the card running wasn't plain sailing. My original plan was to go straight to the AMD's website, download the latest driver. However, on the day I bought my card, there was no drivers published by an AMD on their UK website for the R9 290X. I tried getting the drivers directly from Club 3D, and all they did is redirect me to their own web, uh, to AMD's website to download the drivers from there. So that was a no go. I tried to get the drivers from some other manufacturers, and again, none of them seemed to work either. So I thought, okay, well, I'll try the drivers that are on disk then. After putting a disk into my computer, it became apparent that it wasn't reading correctly. Um, I turned the disk over and saw it was a burn CD. Now that is a relatively common occurrence these days. Um, because driver disks need to be kept up to date and burning driver disks is obviously easier than setting up a proper press to do a proper recorded CD. Um, but this meant I began to get rather worried that the card was potentially a very expensive paperweight. Um, so I decided to hassle Club 3D on their Facebook page and sure enough they sent me some links to what was the most recent driver at the time and finally I managed to get my card working. So. I'd like to thank Club 3D for uh, sorting out with some drivers and getting back to me as quickly as they did and also sharing my unboxing on their Facebook page. So, the tests I've run are Heaven Benchmark 4.0, All Benchmark Catzilla 1.0, uh, Dirt Showdown, Grid 2, Tomb Raider and finally Batman Arkham City. The PC configuration that I'm using is an AMD FX 8350 um, based system with the processor overclocked to 4.7 GHz with a turbo frequency of 5 GHz. Um, there's 16 GB of DDR3 RAM running at 2133 MHz um, and it's all sat in an Asus Crosshair V Formula Z motherboard. For the sake of these tests I have set the card into Uber mode which increases the um, fan to 55% and also turns up the um, sort of power consumption so that it's got more available to it. Um, I've actually set the fans to 100% and fixed them, well not fixed them there, but had it so it can go up to 100% on the basis that I'm aware that the card throttles and it will actually reduce the clock speed when it hits 95 degrees Celsius to bring uh, from 1000 uh, megahertz, it will reduce the speed to reigning the temperatures. So by increasing the fan speed, that means that it can uh, keep running at those frequencies and also um, the other benefit is that I've got a machine that's relatively loud anyway, I have a H100 running stock fans so as a result the computer can get pretty loud and I'm also used to a pair of uh, Radeon HD 6870s running in Crossfire which again with reference coolers they weren't the quietest cards in the world in fact I dare say that the R9 290X is probably quieter um, with its stock cooler than one of those is with its stock cooler. So, the benchmarks. Starting with Heaven Benchmark, I ran it with all the settings as high as I could go at 1920x1080 and it gave me a score of 1319. The next test on the agenda was All Benchmark Catzilla and I ran that at what they used to call Tiger Mode which is um, the resolution set to 1080p. Uh, with a few of the settings turned up, and that got me a score of 10,774. Then I started with the real world benchmarks. Um, starting with Dirt Showdown, which came out last year and can still push graphics cards pretty hard, especially with the level of illuminations and the dynamic lighting turned on. Um, for this, I maxed the settings in the game as much as possible, including an anti aliasing mode which looks like an algebraic equation which was 8F 16 times EQAA and I ran the game at 1920 by 1080 The minimum frame rate was 60.8 frames a second and the average frame rate was 77.45 frames per second. I will admit that for this it's not the best benchmark in the world because it actually uses the in-game AI to produce a race um, which it can then sort of get the benchmark results from. So I ran the test again and in this race I actually got a minimum of 63 frames a second and an uh, average of 81 frames a second. So it's still a reasonable um, benchmark and still a good guideline of what the card can achieve. Um, Grid 2, yet another Codemasters racing game. But this time the race is longer so it's better at achieving averages but again it's also difficult to replicate because it's another race which is done with AI drivers. Uh, nonetheless the results were 
64.19 frames a second for the minimum, an average of 85 frames per second, and a maximum of 114.2 frames a second. This was the same. This has been the same settings as uh, Dirt Showdown, maxed at 1080p with 8f 16 times EQAA. The next benchmark was Batman Arkham City. I know Arkham Origins came out recently, and that's all well and good, but I don't have it, so I can't use it. So if Warner Brothers, DC Comics, or Splash Damage want to help me up with a copy, you're more than welcome. Anyway, the score for Arkham City maxed with physics disabled at 1080p. This yield results of 59 minimum, an average of 108, and a maximum of 158 frames per second. As a side note, I did actually try it with physics on normal, and I achieved a minimum frame rate of 17 frames per second, an average frame rate of 42 frames per second, and a maximum frame rate of 105 frames per second. And with the physics set on high, I managed to achieve a minimum of 16, an average of 40, and a maximum of 100. I will concede that this is a pretty pointless test, because neither the card nor the computer uh, have any dedicated physics hardware, but all it would do is stress the CPU pretty heavily. Um, so, and also with the CPU being over plot, it's not a particularly fair test. But I was intrigued as to what results would be uh, produced. My final test was the latest Tomb Raider game. I couldn't really see any point in benchmarking using the 1996 release. Um, for these results are in the game with 1080p, um, with all the settings maxed, or the 90 aliasing, which I set down at FXAA, which, to be honest, with a game that's that detailed, it doesn't make that much difference. Well, you can see a difference, but um, all it does is affect performance, and if you're running through a jungle, you don't particularly see the jagged edges anyway. Um, anyway, I achieved a minimum frame rate of 60 frames per second, an average frame rate of 76 frames per second, and a maximum of 95.3 frames per second. From what I've seen, I believe this is an incredibly powerful card, and I believe that there will be some room for improvement with regards to drivers, as at the moment they are very much just in beta. Um, but this should improve over the next few months, and we'll soon learn more about what the uh, R9290X is really capable of. As I understand it, the R9290X isn't the titan killer that it was originally fabled to be, but it does take the uh, NVIDIA GTX 780 and show it to his boss especially when it comes to price. When it was released, it heavily undercut the card. I think it was about £50 cheaper over here in the UK, maybe more, depending on where you got it from. Um, but NVIDIA have fought back pretty rapidly on that, and they've reduced the price of their GTX 780s um, to obviously try and stem the flow of it from that one. Um, and also, there is going to be a new GTX 780 Ti released soon, which will probably cost more than the R9290X, 90, but it will probably also run quicker. Uh, but that said, the R9290X 90, is a great card and it's still well priced. And when it comes to AMD's mantle technology coming out later this year and being used, um, the first major game of which I believe is Battlefield 4, um, and they're patching that in December, if I remember correctly. But when that gets used properly, things are going to get pretty interesting. As for complaints about noise and temperature, uh, it's not the first card in the world to run at 95 degrees Celsius. Hell, it's not the first card I've owned to run at 95 degrees Celsius. I used to own a NVIDIA GeForce 7950GX2 um, dual GPU card, uh, and that used to run around about 95 degrees Celsius, and it had a throttling profile at around about 120 degrees, where it started to slow the card down. Uh, some graphics cards do run hot, and you know there will be non-reference versions of the R9 290X coming out, you know, in the coming months, and those should run cooler, be quieter, and probably overclock better than the reference card. Um, but to be fair, for the most part, I've, unless I've been benchmarking, the card's been playing with this, you know, with the settings at 60 frames a second. So with VSync enabled, it's not stressing the card to the point where it's making a lot of noise. Um, you know, unless you've gone for a ridiculously high anti-aliasing level, then it's still a relatively quiet card, um, especially if it's only, as I say, running games which I suppose at the moment would be considered basic. Um, I'm sure I'll learn more about this with the release of Battlefield 4 on Friday. Um, but yes, it can be a quiet card. It's only when you're stressing it heavily that it begins to become loud. So with V-Sync on, the card does less work, thus produces less noise. 
Um, anyway, I hope you found my performance overview useful. Feel free to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Or even dislike the video because I'm wearing a Club 3D t-shirt and you think that I've sold out to them. Um, even though it was actually in the box for the unboxing. Um, it's just a pity it's a extra large because I'm a medium. Or possibly a large around about Christmas. Anyway, thanks for watching. The next benchmark on the agenda was all benchmark Catzilla. For this, I set the benchmark to what was referred to as Tiger Mode, uh, which is their default 1080p resolution mode. And I got a score of 10 bollocks. 10 bollocks. <laughs> um, anyway.